Hey bag makers, I'm Sarah Lawson from Soul Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. Danny's just gonna be joining me in just a second. I can tell something's probably going on with our Facebook stream, possibly, uh, but he's gonna get everything in order and then come join me on the set. So. Welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. I've got to tell you, well, first things first, happy birthday to Sarah with no uh, with an H. Uh, it's Sarah's birthday today. She's tuning in live, so happy birthday to you. I hope you had a great day today. I was making dinner before the show, and I saw, I walked past Danny's computer. It was on getting ready for the live stream. I walked past, it was about 57 minutes before the show started, and I saw everyone chatting um, people chat before the show on both Facebook and YouTube, but I feel especially on YouTube, um, everyone kind of uses the chat maybe about an hour before the show as hey uh, sort of a live chat room, which is really awesome. Have you noticed that too? Yes. Um, I saw viewers from United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. I'm sure there's more that I just missed. Um, but thank you for the community aspect of uh so sweetness and our fellow bag makers i feel like especially now we're in the um at least in the united states and canada we're in the middle of winter um i don't know things are kind of trying and difficult uh for just about everyone pretty much and having something having the chat having the show to look forward to uh those of you that are in the facebook group i feel like it's really important to stay connected um, we did a um, live uh, chat interview a couple years ago with a clinical psychologist and I was thinking about that this morning. She really hit on um, the aspect of ruminating and taking your mind off things and having something to work on just to get lost in and I, find my, I found myself a few times this past week getting lost in the projects that I was working on and so Guys, we got this. Um, work on some bags or pouches, maybe gifts for people that you love. And uh, yeah, we got this. Um, what else was I going to say? Sort of got off on a tangent there. Um, we're going to be chatting about a few things and then I'm going to be answering some questions live near the end of the show. So if you have a question for me, you can type it anytime in the comments. Danny's been having good luck lately with if you either type a question mark before you type your question or if you type it in capital letters. We have a lot of comments coming through as well as questions and it just helps him kind of pick out the, the questions and he collects them. I think you were commenting the last few weeks that there were way more questions than we had time to get yes. through. Is that yep. the case? Yes. So we do try our best to answer as many as we can, but um, we are here every Sunday answering questions. You can always email me if there's something urgent that you need help with. I'm always happy to help with that. Um, I'm answering emails personally, as well as Danny and Bronwyn. So between the three of us, we've got you covered. So I see Danny's putting some more uh, comments on the screen. Gwen's watching from California, Rhonda from Wisconsin. Um, yeah, I'm grateful for all of you. Snowy Alaska. That's a... Snowy Alaska, yep. We're getting some snow in Chicago, uh, possibly tomorrow. I don't know. It seems like we've been getting spurts of snow. South Australia? Every every other day or so, yes. Uh, I saw a bunch watching from Australia. Um, what I've been working on that I can show you because there's a bunch of things behind the scenes that we're not ready to share yet, but soon. Um, I started working on another cross stitch this week. I'm a really big fan of this pattern company, um, Awesome Pattern Studio. And so, uh, there we go. Uh, I started working on a hummingbird the other day. Danny's going to put a picture on the screen of the actual uh, fully finished project so you can see. So that's what mine will look like when it's finished. I'm about halfway done and uh, I've been working on it a little bit every day. I'm really excited to finish it. I love the bright colors so that's what got me on this one. And I have a few more cross stitch kits from the same pattern company. And so once I finish that one I have uh, backups upon backups to work on after that. Um, lately, we've been, every few shows, we've been featuring your either Etsy shops, websites, or however you sell your handmade bags or pouches. And so the featured shop that uh, we wanted to tell you about this week is the Sewing Niche, and Wil Wilma is the sewist from that shop. Danny's going to put some pictures on the screen, and the link to the Sewing Niche, in case you're interested, it's an Etsy shop, is in the description, so you can click on that link and check out the other items for sale at the sewing niche. 
Um, here's a sublime bag that Wilma made. Another sublime bag. She has a few team bags in her shop, so I thought that was really cool. Show your team pride. Um, and there were a few other pictures that I picked up as well. Um, this is the day trip cell phone wallet from Minikin season two. Wilma also had a few other day trips in her shop. I loved this cute um, cartoon cat fabric. It was adorable. This was a creative maker supply case with some dog fabric and there was plenty of space on the inside for um, pockets and other artistic supplies. And then this is the Oriole bag and I love the fussy cutting. It was just perfect. I loved this bag. So again, the link to Wilma's shop, which is the sewing niche, uh, the link is in the description and you can see all of the items in Wilma's shop. She has other things like table toppers and, and all of that listed in the shop. So great job, Wilma. Wilma, all of the projects were just beautiful. So excellent work. Danny's second favorite part of the show when he's on the show with me, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. As I mentioned earlier, we're so grateful for all of those that watch our show and are part of our community. And we really appreciate uh, the subscribes, the likes, and the shares. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, all right, I'll let you talk for a little bit. Let's get over to your pick uh, of the week. Wow, Sarah, that was a mouthful. Yeah, I felt like I was like, da 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 You're on a roll. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> Gosh, that was a good job. Yeah, I was on a roll. <laughs> uh, well, my pick of the week is from Lynn Gannon, and she had a special request for a Doctor Who. Is that grab and go, sir? Uh, yes, it is. And that is a panel she cut up in multiple pieces and attached, I guess, applique style is my guess. Uh, but it looked awesome. I saw this, I'm like, right away. Oh, I, gosh, I loved, I loved the purple zipper. I like the Doctor Who background. It had the TARDIS in it. Uh, excellent choice. I loved it. Beautiful. Two thumbs up. Yeah, wonderful. Um, so such creative ideas to use other items, especially fan type things like um, such as for t on t-shirts, repurposing them for bags. And uh, that was the grab and go sleeve from Minikin season one. And that's a pattern that you, um, I walk you through the measurements of your device and it's really easy to make a personalized device, uh, a personalized sleeve for whatever your device is, Kindle, laptop. Um, I made one for a hardcover book. So lots of different items that can fit uh, in, into that pattern. Were you going to say something? No. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, I guess that's about it. So I'm going to announce the winner of last week's giveaway and then I'll be, I'll start answering some questions. So the winner of last week's giveaway was Annette Margaret. Kraliev, I hope I pronounced that close to correct. So congratulations to you, Annette. I've already contacted Annette on social media and just waiting to hear back from her to get her her prize. And there's another giveaway at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. All right, so have you been collecting a lot of questions? Uh, a fair amount to start. Okay. Sounds good, sounds good. Uh-oh. Lori says, I know you've been talking about new patterns. Any idea when they will be ready to be released? Not trying to rush you. So Danny and I were talking about this last night. And I said, just go out. We'll be released in 2021. <laughs> You'll see it in 2021. That's that's my... We're getting very close. Uh, what we decided when we were talking yesterday, because we didn't... Uh, we work on all of our own deadlines, and especially, I don't know, some days for me are easier than others, and so to take the pressure down a little bit, we decided we'll start showing sneak peeks when we're really, really close to finishing, and uh, we've been making really good progress. I'm actually really proud of the progress we've made so far. So we're getting really close, but we will be sharing sneak peeks when um, it's getting closer. And um, I guess that's all I could say for now. Yep. Jennifer says, what's your favorite hobby besides sewing? So um, I love horseback riding. I um, rode occasionally as a kid, but nothing serious. And then two years ago, I started riding uh, a few days a week. I lease a horse and it's really, um, I don't know. It's very calming for me, just the nature of how horses are. Besides that, I love reading books. I love reading, um, Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell is one of my favorite authors. So sometimes I read nonfiction. I also like reading fiction books, um, TV shows. I like watching documentaries, especially about history, about animals. We, we've been watching a lot of BB show, BBC shows about animals in the past week, right? So that was a secret. I don't really watch sports programs. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
Uh, what were you we watching the other day? There was an episode about reptiles. Uh, they were yeah. all uh, narrated by David Attenborough. So there were um, some cool ones with like the alligators. Sarah didn't like to see, but um, it was very interesting. No, some of the predator predators. I under, uh, I totally understand. All animals need to eat, but some some of the predator type uh, yeah so uh, shots are a little hard to hard to watch, but. Um, Brenda says, is Pelon 808 too heavy to use on the bags instead of SF-101? Pelon 808, uh, I think, is Craft Fuse. Um, I, I guess it depends on what, what part of the bag you're using it for. If you're thinking about using it for the lining, I guess it's okay. I feel like SF-101, which is Shape Flex, is uh, the optimal. I, I know in some areas, Shape Flex is hard to come by. Uh... I suppose in a pinch, it's just a little bit stiffer than the Shape Flex. That's your whole answer? I guess so. Yeah, I know normally I'm a little bit... <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for a little more. I was like, oh gosh. Jacqueline says, when I download the Kennedy bag, I'm not getting the main and bottom templates. It shows us three total pages. Is there another download I'm supposed to be doing? Um, Is that like the straight sections? Off the top of my head, I'm squares? trying to think through that pattern. So first of all, all, in my patterns, all of the squares and rectangle pattern pieces are not actually represented by physical paper pattern pieces that you need to cut out. Those are measurements are called out in the cutting instructions. So you can use your uh, ruler and rotary cutter to cut those out, uh, I feel, more accurately. Um, and it also saves on paper. Uh, we are coming out with starting with the last four patterns that I came out with. Going forward, we'll have um, AO sheets, which is the large format paper that you can get printed at a local copy, copy shop, uh, projector files, and SVG files. So we're trying to give you um, lots of options as far as cutting and printing out your uh, pattern pieces. Um, Blossom says, do you think there will be SVGs for Minikin season two? Um, we did load those up. Uh, Michelle Graham has been working through SVG files. We did load, load those up on the website uh, really recently, last few days. Um, the thing about the website is some, some th sometimes when I try to implement something, it requires testing and it doesn't always work the way I want. But I did load those up on the website. So log into your account, um, refresh your screen, um, see if they're showing for you. If not, um, drop me an email and I can help you out with that. Um, if you're not familiar with SVG files, they're for use in electronic cutting machines, such as the Cricut Maker, the Silhouettes, the Brothers Scan and Cut, so machines like that. I'm curious about how the uh, Reisende bag and Oslo got their name, any Norwegian family maybe. So my uh, family on my mother's side, my mother was born in Austria. Um, I don't know, it's, because I've designed so many patterns, sometimes it's hard to think of names, so I think of names based on either song titles, street names, um, just something that pops into my head, places, things like that is uh, what I've historically used for uh, pattern titles. Quilting in Romania says, question, what helped you learn the most when you first started sewing? So I feel like just continuing to work on projects, no matter how that project turned out, help me the most because with every project and still to this day, every single project teaches me something. And also as a designer, every project teaches me something because after I release a pattern, I can see how people, questions people have, how they react to it, things that they found difficult as far as the construction. So I'm always learning more on both sides, the sewing side as well as the designing side. And, um, especially in the early days, not every project was a success or um, I'm not a perfect sewist, so I'm never really striving for perfection. I'm striving for, is good enough an accurate term to describe my sewing, you think? Strive for perfection, but live with acceptable. Yeah, that's a good one. I there like that. And so, um, yeah, not everything has to be a perfect success. Some things are just uh, learning experiences and I'm definitely okay with that. Tamara says, you are lightning fast on your cross stitch, Sarah. I'm sloth slow. Um, so Tamara's working on a literal sloth cross stitch. And um, Sarah puts the work in. Most evenings she's working on her cross stitch. Yeah, probably. I probably watch a couple TV shows when I work on yep. the cross stitch. So yeah, there's at least a, would you say a couple hours a day? I know that sounds kind of a lot of time, but would you think that's I accurate? I think so, yeah. Yeah. 
Cindy says, what bag do you suggest to store a Cricut or a Sizzix in? So actually Michelle Graham has a pattern hack. It's on my website. If you go to the So Sweetness website, there's a uh, tab at the top that says tutorials and there's a sub tab for pattern hacks and there's one for making the uh, Sheffield tool bag longer so that you can put your Cricut maker inside. Um, Debbie says, what are SVG files? So I think I answered that already. Um, that question might have come up early on, but SVG files are for electric cutting machines like the Cricut Maker, um, Brother Scan and Cut. Basically, um, the machine partners with your either computer, tablet, or other device in order to cut out the fabric or interfacing for you. So the Cricut Maker can cut out fabric, interfacing other substrates like thin pieces of wood. So it can cut out a lot of different things. Nettie says, when I sell bags, do I give you credit for the pattern um, even if I alter it? So that's completely optional. Um, some people do give me credit in the product description that it's a so sweetness pattern. Um, you're not obligated to do that. Um, so it's up to you. I'm just happy that you were able to make something pretty um, and uh, list it in your shop. Clovis says, have you dyed zippers before? I actually have not. I feel like that question kind of rings a bell. I don't know if someone else asked that recently, um, but I, I did. Think last show, someone asked. Last show, yeah. And someone mentioned that you soak it in some material, uh, maybe alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, oh, and okay. it lets you absorb the, the actual dye. I'll have to Don't look, quote me on that. I'll have to look that up because I've never done it before. I have dyed fabric before. Um, I remember the text fabric. But not had. zippers. Yeah, it was some years ago in yeah. our old bathtub, and I think it stained the it bathtub. It did stain the yeah. bathtub. I was dyeing the fabric a uh, turquoise color, like a bright turquoise, like kind of like the top bar where the questions are, like close to that color. And uh, yeah, the tub was kind of old and worn out in some places and the dye adhered to those places that were worn out in the bathtub. Dawn says, my computer died today and I wanted to know if I post my picture on Facebook, could it be put in the challenge for this month? Um, why don't you email us uh, a picture for the challenge, the January challenge. We're, we'll be happy to post that for you. Uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. That's Sarah with no H and either myself or Bronwyn will get that added. Or you could just email it directly to Bronwyn. It's Bronwyn at sosweetness.com. Any plans to do an individual wallet pattern independent of the Minikins pack? Um, I do have on my list for this year a wallet. I'm not sure if it will work out because I've been kind of thinking about it off and on for the last couple of years. But if I do, if I'm able to pull this wallet off that I'm thinking of, it will be uh, available as a separate pattern because that's what I had planned for it. Um, is it difficult to find joy in sewing when you're doing it as a professional with deadlines and goals? Um, it's so funny you asked this question. I was thinking about this earlier, uh, just because I was thinking about it in regards to horseback riding. Uh, it is a little bit different when there's a gray area when your hobby is also your, your job. Um, I would say I, I do love it still almost all the time. It's, it's, I think you found joy more in it more recently, even more than the past, especially, you know, working on, uh, what we're working on you know i don't want to say what we're working on but yeah i would say the last especially during the pandemic it's given me uh purpose and especially the live shows like no matter how i'm feeling on sunday once the camera turns on i'm like all right i know what i'm here for that kind of thing i know that sounds really corny but robbie says what is your favorite hobby danny uh I'd like to say technology with um, a minor in video gaming, but I, I really enjoy researching technology, um, the uses of it. I like to buy it. I like to play with it. Um, that's what I enjoy. So it sort of works well with my hobby for our business. So that's my favorite. Danny is a good researcher. Whatever we need to figure yeah. out how to fix or anything, car yeah. related or whatever. You name it. Um, Nikki says, do you ever add embroidery to your bags? Um, very rarely. I, I can't even, maybe once or twice ever. I think for me, the, the sewing aspect of bags is I'm generally sewing a bag or pouch to prepare a pattern or I'm sewing it again for the video. And so especially with the pattern, um, the initial becomes sort of like a prototype for me and uh, involves often ripping and redoing measurements in the pattern instructions. And so I don't think 
for me, I wouldn't venture to have something like that embroider just because there's a possibility for error in that kind of scenario. And then same thing with the video. And then often I'm not sewing projects again once we're doing it for the pattern in the video. Not that I don't want to sew a bag or a pouch over and over. It just, uh, we're on to the next pattern or video, so. Uh, Teresa says, I just ordered some of the faux leather and it's going to be the first time I worked with it, anything I need to know. So first off, you wanna use either a Teflon foot or a walking foot. I do have a video on my YouTube channel, how to sew with cork fabric and um, a lot of the aspects of that were presented in that video can also be used for either the faux leather or real leather or glitter vinyl, so check that video out. Debbie says, I'm new to bag making, not new to sewing. What is the best one to start with? So I highly recommend, I always recommend either the Baker Street bag. It's a free pattern and video. Um, it has a recessed zipper in it or um, the Easy Leather Hobo bag. That one secures with a magnetic snap. So either of those, they're both free. They both come with a video and those are both a great chance to, they're relatively quick projects, but great chance to um, dip your toes into bag making. Um, Karen says, have you seen All Creatures Great and Small on PBS? Uh, I did watch the first episode. I do have PBS Passport, which is, I guess, their uh, subscription to all of the PBS shows. I have not yet watched uh, episode two, um, but I read all those books as a kid multiple times, probably at least a dozen times each. So I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the episodes. Kim says, when starting out, would you recommend making the same bag until it is good, good enough to be sold or making several different bags just for practice? That's a good question. I feel like... I know. personally would say, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, sure. I think you should try different ones because there's a lot, some people like different techniques such as drop-in lining. Some people like to birth the bag. Mm -hmm. And if you don't experience the other one, you won't know what you like to do better. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, you try a, a multiples, and see what's maybe it's in your bag, then the one you enjoy really, I think you could, you know, the more you make, the better you're gonna make them, you know? Yeah, I, I sort of agree with that. I was talking to another group member, um, Sheila, the other day, and Sheila was mentioning um, before she started working on some of my patterns, she really did not care for binding, but she's made a few of my projects. Uh, I only have a small amount of projects that are finished with binding, but I do throw a few of those in there just to give you a chance to try different techniques like the binding. And um, she said uh, she doesn't mind it now. And I feel exactly the same way. If you're um, exposed to these different techniques, trying them out at least a couple of times, then it's it becomes not that big of a thing, not big, that big of a deal. And um, I don't know, I guess if you're selling it in a shop, you might wanna try the same pattern a couple times and then list it in your shop just to kind of perfect everything included in that particular pattern. But if you're looking to expand your expertise, maybe try a few different projects and then you can um, go down that road. Kathy says, I would love to see a pattern layout in the instructions so I make the most of my fabric. So I definitely hear you on that. Um, I do list in my pattern instructions the pieces in order of how I feel that you should cut them Usually I'm listing either longer or larger pieces first so that you can economize your fabric. I guess because of the way my, my mind works when cutting out my fabric, I'm trying to save up as much fabric as possible. And so I'm, I think we did a video on how, to, how I cut out my fabric. I'm just trying to fit my pieces in one at a time. And so I think that's why uh, the reason I never went down the road of having those illustrations in my patterns. Um, Sarah says, have you watched Spy in the Wild? It's an animal show with anim animatronic spy cameras disguised as animals secretly recording behavior in the wild, cool and a little creepy. I'm not sure. Is that a PBS show? Because I think I remember seeing something like that in the PBS Passport. I have not watched those yet, but I do. It kind of rings a bell, so I'll have to check those out. Tammy says, what is a good product? Um, that I can use to give bags some weight. Sometimes I think the ba bags feel too light. So depending on the bag, um, I guess it would also depend on the interfacing that you're using for the bag, but you can always add uh, a false bottom to a bag, which is something that uh, is stiff at the bottom of the bag, but that you can take out in case you need to wash the bag or if you just plain like to take the false bottom out. And I have a free video on my YouTube channel how to make a false bottom and that video will help you adapt it for whatever bag that you'd like to make one for. 
Cheryl says, in most of the bags you make, what type of interfacings are the most common in your bag? So that's a great question. I 100% of the time use Pellon SF101, also known as ShapeFlex, for my linings. Unless you're using a canvas or a waterproof canvas for your lining, then you can skip that um, SF101. For the exterior, I want to say maybe 95% of the time I use foam interfacing for the body of the bag. Sometimes I slip in some small portions of either Pell and Peltex or Decoville Heavy, which is uh, their stiff interfacing. So I might insert, for example, let me grab a bag. So the body of this bag is not is made with foam interfacing, but this uh, bottom portion over here, there's a small portion of, uh, like I said, either Peltex or Decoville Heavy. So the bag still feels uh, softer and flexible, but I like having um, stiffer portions on certain aspects like the bottom to um, hold, hold a lot of things in. and hold the shape. Yes, exactly. Uh, Rebecca says, I have started using any soft and stable. Is there a trick to getting it to be taut while basting it? It seems uh, so loose. So what I personally do when attaching uh, fabric to uh, soft and stable, because my preferred foam interfacing is soft and stable. And what I do is I'll iron my fabric, cut my foam interfacing out, and then I will lay the fabric on top of the foam, iron it again. It's not fusible, but ironing it, it, it sort of has a nap to it. And so when you iron the fabric on top of the foam, it really smooths things out nice and crisp. Um, another option before you even uh, add it to the foam you can use some spray starch like Best Press or um, Soak has, uh, the brand Soak also has a um, flatter alternative spray. It's called, it's called Flatter. That's another option. So after I iron the fabric on top of the foam, then I'll directly place the Wonder Clips around the outer edge and then I'll try to get it over to the sewing machine, keeping it nice and flat. Um, Danny, you've probably seen me do that. So keep it nice and yep. rather than letting it flop over or anything like that, just keep it as flat as I can, getting it over to the sewing machine, stitch it in place, and that helps get it nice and smooth and flat. Linda says, how do we use the projector file? So there is a group on Facebook, if you're, a mem if you're on Facebook, called um, Sewing for Projectors, I think is the name of the group. And... Um, or projectors for sewing, sorry. Projectors for sewing is the name of the group. And a projector is basically what it sounds like, a projector. Do you wanna do a little bit of talking? Yeah, so um, <laughs> Sarah had me join this group because she was interested in this. Um, you have to mount a projector either on your ceiling, a wall. Some people use a countertop near it. You need a short throw projector, it's a certain type. And they also have an ultra short throw projector. And when they say generally you have a, a projector in your house, you need about 10 feet to get the size, you know, to the screen, if it's 100 inches, or whatnot. So they're taking a projector, they're putting it on their ceiling, and they're projecting it on their desk. So if it was, if we were looking down, you'd see the image, whatever you're gonna be cutting, and they scale it to the correct size first. So they mount it, adjust it, and they project like a one inch square, mm -hmm. measure the one inch square, then it's <laughs> accurate. Then they put the projector file down and it outlines over your fabric. And I guess that's how you cut it out. Right, because it's projecting on your work table, you just move the fabric to where, like say if you're fussy cutting, you just move it to where you want because the design is on your table. And then you just cut around it um, in, uh, I guess that's the cliff note version. But anyway, look for on Facebook, the group Projectors for Sewing. <laughs> Lori says, a little late. Have you baked any goodies this week? Uh, Violet and I made chocolate chip cookies yesterday. Delicious. We like having them fresh. And so what we did is we... We baked half the dough yesterday and the other half I put in the fridge. So when we want some more fresh cookies, we can just uh, bake a new fresh batch. I think that's all. I haven't made any bread in the last few days. I think it's time maybe tomorrow to make another loaf. Karen says, what new products are coming to your shop? That's a good question. Recently, we added the Sew Tights uh, magnetic pins in three different styles to the shop. I am always looking for new notions though, new gadgets, new fun things. Um, I do have a rather long, I'm looking at my list of all the new notions I have to review on Social Sunday. I think I have at least 20 items in the list. So sometimes people suggest things, I buy them and uh, review them on Social Sunday. Some of these things I'll eventually add to the shop depending on what the item is. 
Um, I got some really cool uh, paints to paint on raw edges of either cork or leather. Maybe we'll do that this Sunday, uh, this upcoming Sunday, but um, feel free if you ever spot something really awesome, send me an email and I'd love to hear about what that new either tool or notion is. And again, my email is Sarah at So Sweetness and that's Sarah with no H. Louise says, does your uh, store ship internationally? I'll let you answer that one. Uh, we do sh ship internationally, uh, but if you are in the UK, please send us an email first. And then because there's a new VAT tax um, and Sarah's got to go through Etsy and make a listing for you. Yep. Uh, but we do ship worldwide. It's, uh, I think it's still taking a little bit longer, but uh, have you tracked any international packages lately for customers? I have not, so that means that they're getting there in a okay. <laughs> acceptable <laughs> yeah, good. time. Good point. Uh, Mary Grace says, where do you send your scissors to be sharpened? I think I threw the information away when I organized my sewing table. So the website is simplysharper.com. They have two different locations. One's in Wisconsin, one's in Texas, and you just ship your scissors or knives or, or what have you to which you pick which one, whichever one's closest to you, and they send them back uh, sharpened for you. And I've used this service, I think a couple times now, and very happy with, it was so funny because when I got the uh, scissors back, the sharpened scissors, they included band-aids in the package, you know, oh, your scissors are gonna be really sharp now, just in case you need, here's some band-aids. So I thought that was really clever. Mary says, do you need a Teflon foot to sew with cork? So. I guess the answer is sometimes, depending on either the heat or the humidity, I'm not sure what it is. Sometimes I find that I need to use my Teflon foot for sewing with cork. You'll know because once you start sewing with it, if it sort of tends to drag or you notice your stitches are really tiny and close together, then you'll know that you need either the Teflon foot or the walking foot. Sometimes I don't wanna bother testing or checking, especially if we're doing a video and I just slap that tough line foot on there for sewing with cork just from the get-go. So um, yeah, I would recommend testing before you start sewing on your project just to make sure. Um, but a tough line foot is fantastic to have. I highly recommend having one for your sewing machine. Um, I use mine. I'm not always sewing with cork fabric or leather or vinyl, but I am a lot of the time. Wouldn't you say yes. I'm often switching yep. to it? Yeah. Just look at your bags. It could be a handle. It could be, you know, small Just accent features. Just a tiny features. little, a tiny little piece. Yeah. Purse tabs, all that stuff. Uh, April says, how can I submit my shop to be considered for a feature on your live show? Um, I don't think I included that in the links for today, did I? No. Uh, feel free to email me and I'm happy to get you that link. We did post it a few weeks on the, the live show, but it's been a while since we posted that link. Um, Karen says, Sarah, do you actually have UFOs other than something you are designing? Um, I did work on a quilt block of the month quilt this summer. I did finish all the blocks, but I did not sew all the blocks together into the quilt top. And at the time I finished the last block, I decided I'll save this for another time for finishing the quilt top. Other than that, I don't know. Traditionally, my U my UFOs are generally patterns, either patterns that I, it's so funny, like through the years, I probably have three or four patterns that I wrote that I just never moved forward with. There wasn't a problem with the pattern. I don't know why. I'm, it's sort of like a squirrel. Like you get attracted to a shiny object and then you see another shiny object and you're like, oh, I'm really excited about working on this other thing. And so like I, I leave that first pattern and then I just never come back to it. I don't know why. Um, Stein says, can I use Decoville light and foam with vinyl for the paladin pouch? Um, the paladin pouch, I think I used fleece interfacing for that. Um, I did see people use uh, foam interfacing for that pouch. I'm not sure both of those would be necessary. It's a relatively smaller project. You want to grab one of those paladin pouches that are on the top. Any one is fine. Yeah, so this is the paladin pouch. It is a smaller project, as you can see, it comes in three different sizes, has the multiple, there's like a divider in the middle pocket in the middle with multiple sections. So because it's a smaller project, um, like I said, foam you can use if you want to. I'm not sure if all those uh, other layers are necessary though. Kristen says, do you have any tips on sewing with a zipper foot or a tutorial video? So your zipper foot is going to depend on your machine. I use a, let's see if I have it in here. I do not. Um, I, I have a Juki, so I have a hinge zipper I use what's called the hinge zipper foot. So it's, um, it looks like my regular foot, it's just really narrow. 
Um, it's a very cool foot. I've seen it up close and personal, and it's pretty amazing at what it does. I'm trying to think if there's any other free videos that I use the uh, hinge zipper foot on. I'm not sure. It's not popping to my head uh, immediately. Um, Patricia says, Danny, do you have recommendations for a beginner YouTube or to use in editing videos? Um, I would say go with three options. Um, a great one to start. I've not used it personally, but I've read, I was thinking about switching to it. It's called DaVinci, and I believe they have free um, versions of it. And you can test it out and give it a shot. Is Even that Adobe, spelled like the artist D-A-V-I-N-C-I? I believe so. I don't okay. want to tell you something wrong because I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Uh, but there's also Adobe Premiere Elements, which is a more basic um, set of Adobe products. And that lets you still edit your video and do nice stuff with it. It's just not as technical. And that might be a great starting point as well. Okay. I think you said three options. Two. Two? Okay. Well, I, Adobe Premiere Elements okay. and Adobe Premiere are two of the same things. Okay. Elements is the light version. Gotcha, gotcha, That's gotcha. That's inexpensive and not a monthly charge, I believe. Okay. Um, Donalyn says, how do I join another state? Uh, so Sweetness Group will be moving from so Southern California back to Hawaii. So... Um, if you, in the Facebook search bar, if you type in SSSP, so that's three S's, SSSP, and then the state that you're looking for, um, that group should come up. State or country, so, because we have country groups as well. Delva says, are your patterns designed for the domestic machine sewist? Lately, it seems that one needs an industrial machine and not sewing with vinyl is, um, not in. So, um... I use a home sewing machine. My very first sewing machine was a really inexpensive brother. I think it was about $120. Uh, I was using that one for a few years uh, while I was designing patterns. So I sewed the airplane bag on that one. I'm sure many others, the airplane bag is just pa popping into my mind because it's such a large bag. So these bags are meant to be sewn on. I've actually never sewn on an industrial sewing machine, um, but they are meant to be sewn on home sewing machines, although not every home sewing machine is created equal. Some of them are more workhorses than others. Can you hand crank on all sewing machines? Uh, yeah, um, I think, yeah. I'm, I was wondering if a machine is maybe struggling. You might want to, in the area it's struggling, instead of trying to push it really hard, use your hand to help crank around like curves and Some machines seams. are not as good with lots of layers, which is kind of what we encounter in bag making. So, um, but again, it's, depends on brand and the model of the machine within the brand. Um, Dot says, I love the gloss cosmetic bag, but the binding kills me. I guess I am a birth, birth person, any bag like that that doesn't use binding. So if you don't like binding, I'm not sure if you've ever tried, tried fold over elastic. Um, I've used fold over elastic for a few side pockets, but um, it's really nice because it's naturally stretchy and you might prefer that to traditional uh, fabric made binding. Um, as, as far as that particular pattern goes, I really wanted to avoid the binding. Sometimes it's just necessary, just the way everything was constructed with the, I wanted to have a pocket in the front and that pocket serves as a divider. So just, I guess the design of it uh, kind of limits it to having either binding or try that fold over elastic. Jennifer says, I would like coloring book versions of the project so I can audition color combinations. You know what I've That's seen? That's pretty cool tons of cool patterns with coloring pages, but I never thought of that for... And guess uh, what? I've got a person pattern. who could possibly do that. Tell them the story about Violet the yeah, other day. Yeah, I wish I could show you guys a picture, but that's going to be in a, a reveal later on. Uh, sh she's done a new logo. It's not going to be our logo for our website, but it's going to be for like stickers or maybe shirts. And she came up and just said, hey, look what I worked on. And it was a Sublime bag that had, I don't want to give the great like thing away, but had a unique <laughs> fabric choice on it. And she had she zippers. She illustrated the whole thing The whole herself. thing illustrated on her iPad. And I was blown away. It looked so awesome. She's 12 years old. And when I looked at it, uh, at her design, I was like, wow, I'm sort of jealous of your skills, Violet, because I she's don't. She's very technical. And she's yeah. amazing. Which This is not like a um, a, a crazy, I, this is the basic iPad. Um, and it's, yeah, she uses, I think, called Procreate. And um, it's amazing what she could do with it. The kids are so good with technology. It's I'm trying crazy. to get William to draw Sarah in anime form, but it's not working out so well yet, so I have to reinforce it with a little <laughs> threat, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Marie says, 9 p.m. PBS, all creatures great and small, about an ailing racehorse, Sarah. Oh, I'm going to have to watch that one. Yeah, I saw that comment. I'm like, oh, I love 
I love horses, but like I grew up reading tons of books also about race horses, like uh, Sea Biscuit Ruffian, uh, Seattle Slough, like all those. Like I was obsessed with like reading stats about race horses when I was a kid. I even had like a couple of horse racing magazines that I would get like on a weekly basis. Like I was nuts when I was. <laughs> Uh, how do you wash the bags made with foam and quilting fabric? Can you throw them in the washing machine? You can. Um, the foam can be washed and put in the dryer. Um, do, do you want to wash it first before you quilt it? If you're going to quilt it? Well, she just said quilting fabric, so she might not be talking about actually quilting it. If you're ever unsure about fabric as far as like shrinkage rates, um, you can always pre-wash your fabric and also put it in the dryer before you iron it and cut it out for your project. Um, the fabric I use generally has minimal shrinkage and so I would be completely comfortable in making a bag, putting in the washing machine, put it in the dryer. I've done it with some bags, but as you can see, I make so many bags, there's often no need to reuse bags over and over and over. I see you're laughing. No, we have a lot you of bags. You should see how many bags are in the basement. People realize it, yeah. The basement uh, is like a showcase for I'm sure everyone realizes how many bags we have. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> Sharon says, do you have a document that gives instructions on how to download an SVG file? So whatever manufacturer your machine is from, um, they should have some videos and tutorials on their website, uh, whether it's Cricut or Brother or Silhouette. Um, YouTube videos on that. Um, I don't have tutorial videos currently on uh, using SVG files just because there's so many options as far as different machine models and manufacturers, but you can find all that readily available on YouTube. Karen says, in your opinion, what is the easier way to attach SF-101? Cut all the pieces and match them up or cut cotton main fabric, iron onto SF-101, then cut to correct shape. So what I personally do, recently what I did because I was working with a fabric that had a little bit of a drape to it, I had a half a yard of this fabric and I ironed the, the whole entire half yard to a large piece of shape flex and then I cut out my pieces. I don't normally do that, but because of the type of fabric, that's what I did for that particular project because I wanted my pieces to be exact and so I thought that would be the best way. So when I'm using quilting cotton, my normal process is I cut all of my lining and exterior pieces out of the quilting cotton fabric. Then I lay my cut pieces on top of the respective interfacing. So either the foam interfacing, the shape flex, whatever. I lay the fabric on the safe foam, I cut around it, and then I attach it to the interfacing. So that's my personal process. I know everyone does something a little bit different, but it's just something, I guess, what I'm most comfortable with. Um, do you follow the grain of fabric? Unsure how to orient pattern pieces. So I did notice a couple questions recently about this uh, in the Facebook group. So this is a great question. So Grain of fabric matters mostly for garments. So grain of the fabric is parallel to the selvage, which is the outer or printed edges of the fabric. For, for garments, it matters because it matters how certain pieces stretch, like your bodice, especially pieces that are fitted. It matters how they're cut because of the way um, they stretch they release, on the bias, yeah. which is on the diagonal, like a 45 degree angle. For bag making, we're not really concerned with pieces stretching, especially because we're attaching them to interfacing. So in fact, we really don't want uh, most bag pieces to stretch. So the, what, what was I going to say? I guess um, I would just cut your pieces out uh, either if you're fussy cutting or to minimize the amount of fabric that you're using, but uh, grain is really not an issue in general for bag making. Kathy says, Sarah and Danny, I have to say that the Soul Sweetness community is very unique and special. I love how you connect with everyone. I have been in the Facebook group and watching the shows for a few years. Thanks for the patterns and knowledge. Also, excellent customer service. I sew and sell, uh, I think. Appaloosa is my best seller. Oh, that's awesome. I love the Appaloosa bag. Thank you so much for watching, Kathy. Um, that really means so much to me, to us. Yep. We get really nice emails. And thank you, everyone, for being so nice and polite. And just thank you. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic because some of the things you read online is like, wow, it's just lots of negative stuff. Doom but and like, yeah, yeah, but what we've got in our community is uh, just amazing. Linda says, have you ever used uh, To Real Magic? Um, I think I have, uh, I want to say it's probably been almost 10 years. If I'm thinking of the right uh, product, it kind of crinkles. 
I don't know, it kind of crinkles your fabric up and draws it in to make interesting texture on your projects. I could be completely wrong, but I, that's kind of ringing a bell as far as that goes. Um, I had just used it a couple times just to experiment with it, but it wasn't my, I guess it wasn't my thing just because I'm using, using a lot of large scale prints and that for my projects. Heather says, I cut the soft and stable slightly oversized, then I sew the fabric to it, pulling the edges taut. After I cut off the extra foam, works like a charm. That's a really great tip also. Having the soft and stable bigger just makes it easier both to pin and to sew. And then you don't have to worry about, um, I don't know, differences in your fabric in the foam because you're just trimming down after you've uh, attached it. Are you calling in on the questions? Yeah, and there's still a ton of questions. We're sorry we can't get to them all, but... Um... Yeah, it's that time of the show. Oh, can we just post this last one? Because we were talking about horses a few times today. Uh, Anita, Anita just mentioned in the comments, I rescued a retired racehorse, the sweetest guy. I love that. Um, I don't know. It's just fun that uh, horses can have a second career in that way. So that's awesome, Anita. All right. So one last thing to get to is the giveaway. I went deep into the stash uh, for tonight's giveaway question, uh, giveaway prize. Before oh, before you say the giveaway, oh, wow. I, another thing I'd like to give recognition to is <laughs> for everyone who, uh, you know, I go back and look at the old videos, how they're doing and stuff. Uh, thank you so much for liking the videos, sharing them still. Uh, it really helps. And thank you very much for doing that. And I see it consistently every week. So thank you very much. Um, oh, the giveaway prize. <laughs> it's like, what happened? Sorry. <laughs> All right, so before I, sh I show the prize, I just wanted to let you know um, you have one week to enter the giveaway, so I'll be drawing the winner at the end of the day this Saturday and announcing the winner on next Sunday's show. All you have to do is answer my question in the comments wherever you watch our show, either on Facebook or YouTube, and you want to make sure you're logged into your account first. The giveaway prize from my stash is a fat quarter bundle of Mendocino, which was designed by Heather Ross. So there's seahorses, octopus, octopi, uh, mermaids, uh, lots of fun colors. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I buy things and it's sort of like, uh, what is it, Marie Kondo? If you haven't used, well, Danny's philosophy is if you haven't used something or worn something in like a year or so. That was from one of your shows I was watching. They said that and I thought it was a great idea. Anyway, I've had this for, I don't even know how many years, but I feel like it's time for it to find uh, a new home. And so this is the giveaway prize. Again, Fat Quarter Bundle designed by Heather Ross. My giveaway question is, what is your favorite restaurant? Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to knock on the table, but what is your favorite restaurant? Um, Russell's Barbecue. Mm, okay, we're in the Chicago area, so I think that's, that's Elmwood a, Park. Um, my favorite is, uh, I love Mexican food, so just about every Mexican <laughs> restaurant, I think There's is a lot favorite. of variations, and we found some cool ones. That's true. Yeah, Yeah, that's sure. true. So answer the question in the comments, and I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Oh, sorry, sir. One more thing. What? I forgot to hit the button when you oh, got so. Oh, okay. Just so everyone can see every time. Right, right, what's your right. favorite restaurant? All right, all right. Now we can finish. All right. Um, have a great week and happy Bye, sewing. Everyone. Bye, everybody.